Yo, 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 Thought Warriors. What is up? Higher Learning is on. It is I, Van Lathan Jr. Mm. And it's me, Rachel and Lindsay. Mm-hmm. Van, are we okay? Are we okay? We, we Let's are. Just start there. Okay. Well, I'm okay. Okay. I'm okay. All right. Just checking in. I can I can check in on you. I'm okay. Uh it's uh it's raining in Los Angeles. Where? Psst, don't worry about it. Don't you worry. It's not, ra- it's not raining over here. Don't you worry. What are you eating? What is that? A cookie. What kind of cookie? Like one of those it looks like a white person's cookie. It's my favorite. Well, cookie bouquet my favorite, but these See, Rachel, that's not that's a white person's cookie, man. Oh. Those cookie with the sugar on top of them, man. That's oh not how we gosh. get down. You can find them at Walmart. You can find them at pavilions out here. No. I love them. I don't like They're those so big bad. cookies with the big thick sugar. That's like why people eat those this cookies. It's not a big cookie. It's so a, like a my mom makes a real niggerish cookie for everyone. She loves them. You had some. You had some of her cookies at my birthday party and last year. They were amazing. Right? They were diabetes. That's what they were. But boy, they taste good. I love you, Mama. Mama was uh mm-hmm. doing her thing for Halloween yesterday. What did you do for what Halloween? She do? She's got, Who she dress up as? They they dress up in eclectic costumes that you don't really know what they are, but they're like Mardi Gras mavens. You know? It's I cool. love it. What did you do? Well, I was Freddy. Freddy Krueger, yeah. Yeah. Apparently so, so was, was LeBron James. Now he looked creepy. I tell you what. I just want to tell the thought warrior something. Fuck y'all. How about that? Fuck y'all. I know the nigga dressed up as Fer- Freddy Krueger. You guys get one thing and then you, la- you latch on to it. You're trying to get me to look at the picture of LeBron. I was already freaked out. And then I looked on my Instagram. Tag, 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 tag. Freddy Krueger. LeBron was Freddy Krueger. People was tagging me and Freddy Krueger adjacent shit that had just all kinds of Freddy <laughs> stuff. Freddy, Freddy, Freddy. <laughs> Stop LeBron with the looked Freddy. creepy. He did look creepy. That was, I thought about getting the makeup done. I decided to stick with the mask. His was too much. But listen, a good weekend. My cousin was in town from Texas. Texas cousins. Um, haven't seen her mm-hmm. since the pandemic. All right. We had a good time. And you know how it is? I don't know if you feel this way. When people come to town, and I'm new to LA, I feel like they want to do LA things. They want to do what's trendy. They want to be like on the scene. They want to go to places they've heard of. And so that's in my mind. But my cousin was like, no, I want to do the same stuff we do in Dallas. We used to do in Dallas. She wanted to go to just like the local bar, watch the game, Thursday night football. We went to the Pink, uh, pink Taco, sat at the bar, watched the Astros game. Everything. We went to a party Friday night. I was Dion from Clueless. Dion oh, from Clueless, nice. not Stacey Dash. No, Dion you were Stacey Dash. It's okay. I want to be clear. You are Stacey Dion Dash. Dion from Clueless. No, that would be, that's the equivalent of me wearing like going as Mel Gibson, like his character from Lethal Weapon. You're going as Mel Gibson. I would be going as Mel Gibson. You went as Clueless. It's okay. You, no, you, put, would, you put the holiday and the character above the culture and I applaud you for that. <laughs> I was Dion from Clueless. And then Sunday, we went to the Lakers game. The Lakers. The Lakers play. Who they play? Who they play? The Rockets. And so I was like, oh, ain't nobody going to be here. It's the Rockets. Nah, man. They were there and they they were in costumes, huh? Not as many as you think. Mm. Not as many as you think. But it was bad. I mean, your boy Drake was there. I know how much Uh, you like him. uh, Front uh, and center. uh, Trophies. Uh, uh, Drake. Uh. So... You know, they do their thing where they show celebrities in the crowd. Yeah. But with Drake, he was on the court. So the camera was in front of him for a good amount of time before they showed him on the screen. Right. So then they show him on the screen and he acts like he's surprised. He's like. Right. When the crowd starts cheering and I was just like, this is and this is why I can't stand You don't Drake. like Drake. I just, this moments like that where I'm like, come on, bruh. It was so extra. He's like, oh, me? Me? 
Me? It's him. What are they cheering for? Oh, they're cheering for me. Hey, guys. I do, I do not stay at the Intercontinental. He was there at the- I don't either. He was at- you don't say at the intercontinental. <laughs> what? Saying. Why is this intercontinental <laughs> catching strays? Yeah, I saw he was at the game. I saw him talking to Housley at the game. They were talking. Uh, she was Halsley. there. She didn't do all that. Yeah, she because just... well, really, would you know Housley if she like if you walked into the mall and Housley walked in front of you? Would you know who Housley was? I would, but it's funny that you say that because she was wearing a mask, and mm-hmm. I don't think people would have known past them playing her music. So they were playing people's music, and um. She took down her mask so people could see who it was. Oh, to me, and Halsley. Was like, ah, hey. ah. <laughs> yeah. Now, did Halsley name herself after the popular throat lozenge? Unclear, Van. Unclear. Because ha- those, <laughs> those lozenges, those are fast acting. Okay. Halsley. Halls. Yeah, when's the last time you had a Halls? I think it's Hall C. Is it Hall C? Halsey? Is the Halsley? cough drop Halsley? Is the cough drop no, the Halsley? Because no, she's the cough drop she's is just Halls. She's Halsey. I, I, okay. always, I always say Halsley. Wow. I think it's Halsley. Wow. No. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, I think Halsley. In Halsley, Ashley spelled backwards in her name, Ashley. I think that's what it is. Okay, it's not Ashley spelled backwards. It's not. What's is happening it? here? What's happening today? Hold on, what? hold on. I gotta look up Halsley. <laughs> I mean, hold on for a second. <laughs> Ashley spelled backwards. No, her name is Ashley. Her real name is Ashley. So maybe she mixed it up. I forget what you call that term, but it's not backwards. It's not backwards. What do you call it when you do that? When you, when you mix up the words. Yeah. I mean the well, letters. You 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 you. Hey, hey, Donnie. What is that called when you when you do what Halsley did to her name? It's an anagram of her first name. And also a reference to the Halsley Street Station uh, in New York City, a place where she spent a lot of time as a teenager. Hmm. Halsey. Oh, it's Halsey. It's not Halsley. You're right. That's what I was trying to tell you. So people say people don't say Halsley. No. Halsley. Hal Halsey. Halsey. I don't like it. All right. uh, Anyways, uh, what did you do? Did you dress up? Uh uh-uh. uh, I ended up not dressing up. What happened? Mm-hmm. Now you 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 teased the Thought Warriors and you said she had a costume and you even had them jump up on the Reddit and talk about it, and you didn't even do the it. The costume was gonna be Kanye West. So if you guess so Kanye shout West, out you who guess guessed it. you guess you guess and, right. And what happened? You just weren't feeling inspired. I lost inspired? the will to do it. Is what happened, mm. Rachel. Sometimes things seem like a good idea, and then the time comes and you don't want to dress up. Okay, I wanted it to like chill lazy. out. It sounds laziness. It's a little lazy, but like, why would I, why should I have to be hardworking about Halloween? You don't have to be hardworking, but you had this idea. You were very excited about it at one mm-hmm. time. I was a little I excited, it was a, mildly. You were excited because when I guessed excited. it, when I guessed it, you were like. How did you know? You were yeah. ready. And I was excited for you. I love Halloween. I like to see people dress up and how they get creative. You know what I don't enjoy? What? Or what celebrities are doing with it now. What do you mean? If, it's not creative to me, nor is it fun for them to get, they have all this money in the world, something like that. With all this money, they can be anybody who they want and they recreate these things and then they just take pictures of them and post them on the grand where they reenact videos. And I'm like, it's like... I, you're doing a music video or you're doing That's or you're acting thing. in a movie. That's I just, my it's, thing. I'm not into it. I don't, I'd rather see us regular folks. Yo, if you're going to if you're going to be like a um if you're going to be something for Halloween, that's cool. But like when you redo a whole situation, I don't that's kind of like not Halloweeny to me. Yeah. Halloween. It's just It's like yeah, it takes it's, I don't know. J Z Jay Z was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. This is who inducted him: Barack Obama, Dave Chappelle. Okay, Jay Z was among a class on Saturday night that included Tina Turner, LL Cool J, the Go Go's, Todd Rundgren, and the Foo Fighters. All right, and Carol King. Carol King. Uh, he gets a speech by a former president who gave Jay-Z his flowers. Um, you know, Jay-Z 
was uh, very magnanimous when he was up there. He gave a shout out to Dame Dash, who also was one of the 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 founders of Rockefeller Records that helped Jay Z jump off his first uh, his first album and their their record label, Change Hip Hop. My question to you is this: Do you think it's fair that Jay Z was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in the same class as LL Cool J? And Tina Turner. Don't Tina Turner and LL Cool J deserve to have gone into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame before Jay Z? I'm asking a serious question. Shout out to Jay Z. We're not even going to talk about the Dave Chappelle shit. That's that's fine or whatever. But don't you think that Tina Turner and LL should have been in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame before Jay Z? I I'm more on the Tina Turner tip. I was shocked. I would, I, 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 but I'm, I'm telling you what grabbed my attention first. Yes, I saw LL, but it shocked me that Tina Turner was inducted and she hadn't already. I was even a little shocked Carol King had been in, inducted, if you want to be honest. She's written for so many people and like her songs have, you know, gone on through the test of time. Now, Carol I was, King, I was, that's the lady that killed her husband, right? With and fed him to oh. a tiger. Yeah, Van, that's her. Right up there on the same level as Tina Turner, LL Cool J, and Jay Z. You're right. That's the only Carol I know. Carol King. Technically, Tina's oh, in twice now. This is her induction right. as a solo artist. I don't, I'm not talking about that. I, look, there's no Ike and Tina. But to me, there's no Ike and Tina. It's Tina. Turner. So even as a solo artist, she was popping back in the 80s. I feel like she should have made it before Hove. And what happened to Hove is long overdue. Long overdue. Like it, great for Hove. Proud of Hove. But LL Cool J, I think it's blasphemous to hip hop that LL, who is a pioneer before Hove, that he doesn't get in before Jay Z gets in. A blasphemy. This LL Cool J, the besmirch of the name of LL Cool J. So how many times has LL been up? One, I would love to know. Two, like, I'm curious if this is the first time he's been up for it. Two, are you saying that nobody who came before Jay-Z could be inducted at the same time as him? What I'm saying is I look at hip hop in terms of this, right? You got to make the way for people. Right. LL, LL, Donnie says that LL has been on the ballot six times times damn how the fuck could <laughs> ll be on a ballot it's not even about hove man hove is a first ballot whatever how the fuck could ll cool j be on a Six ballot times. how could he be on any music ballot and not There's get the it? Problem. do i have to remind people just who the fuck ll cool j is you want to hear around so. the way girl you want to hear hey lover you want to hear i'm bad you want to hear these joints? It's jingling, baby. Huh? It's jingling, baby. I like this. Go ahead, Daddy. Go ahead. <laughs> LL's been around for so long. LL is getting fronted on more than any other rap rage. A six times rage. Rage. Be honest. That's not fair. Well, that's why I wanted to know because I knew that this wasn't the first time that he had been up, and it's crazy to me six times he gets it, and in the same time, and the same time as Jay Z. That to me makes it even worse. Um, not saying that Jay Z shouldn't get it. I think we agree on that. We all agree. It's just the fact that I don't know he shared the same the stage at the stage at the same time that LL did. It's 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 different. I, I don't know what the, I don't know what the uh, criteria is. I don't know either, but I will tell you this. The reality is that a lot of people, we're talking about the greats, and a lot of people shit on LL Cool J. And I and this isn't really about Jay-Z, it's more about LL. LL should not have had to say to share his induction night with a rap star of the caliber of Jay-Z. I am starting to get pissed off with this whole rock and roll Hall of Fame situation because they don't know how to interpret and pay homage to our culture. 
I saw that LL Cool J. Now it's the the the, the headline is obviously Jay Z got in. LL Cool J is a rap right. pioneer, man. So millions and millions of records was viable for fifteen years in the game, acting, all of that stuff. He's a cultural phenomena he's something like a phenomena he's something <laughs> like a phenomena he invented the term goat did you guys know that LL Cool J invented the term goat he had an album that was called greatest of all time the goat that whole situation LL gave that to y'all and we don't respect it I, I do you wonder there was something that you said that made me think Oh, no, no, no. I was going to say, you're so right about LL because after the headlines of Jay-Z getting inducted, the next thing I saw was about J-Lo performing for LL. She wasn't mm-hmm. even the one that was on her. She did a performance for him. So they really weren't giving him his shine. The only thing I think, I, I, I was looking this up as you were talking and I'm wondering, Jay-Z has a record label and is listed as a songwriter more than LL is. Like I'm mm-hmm. looking at bios, just a quick Wikipedia glance. Mm-hmm. List Jay Z as a songwriter. Started a record label. Do you think that gives him more to as to why he was inducted on the first time, first go around, than LL? So asking a serious question. So here's not the thing. taking away from what he means to hip hop, just no, no, more on the no, table. No. Look, here's the thing. In the history of hip hop, there's no doubt that Jay Z's name is going to ring truer or bigger than LL's. It's just the way it goes. It's Jay Z, man. Set a lot of records, been around for a long time. Still musically and, uh, and vi- viable right now as a rapper. Jay Z is a once in a lifetime career. He's got the greatest rap career of all time, Jay Z. No doubt about it. Gotta give it up to Hoth. I'm talking about how we treat the legends that crafted this thing that is rap. LL wrote all of his songs. Okay, he's a prolific songwriter and the fact that he's writing his own shit. LL Cool J is one of the guys who was the first, he was maybe the first big, huge superstar of rap. The solo star of rap that pushed things to that limit. And we just got to make sure that we don't lose sight of the fact that LL Cool J is a staple in this game. And I just think that you can't have him on a ballot six times and not let him in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's just not, that's whack. And that shows a fundamental misunderstanding of our culture. And maybe we misunderstand our culture if we don't pay respect to guys like LL Cool J. I was listening to LL Cool J in the first grade. The first grade. So I I get what you're saying, but it's LL, man. It's LL. Do you know who Alpo Martinez is? I'm Alpo. Before he snitched, dog. Alpo Martinez. Uh, Did you ever see the movie Paid in Full? Uh, Yes. So Paid in Full is the story of Rich Porter, uh, AZ, and Alpo. Mm. Harlem guys that were running shit back in the day. So speaking of Jay-Z, it's a movie that was uh, produced by Dame Dash over there. Um, Yes. So Rich Porter... Who who is Mitch, played by Mikai Pfeiffer in the movie, was killed by Alpo, who's Rico in the movie. Uh, Alpo was a notorious New York City drug dealer, but also a fucking cold-blooded killer. If you go watch an interview with Alpo, where Alpo is just talking about all these people he killed, it's insane. They shot him up. Alpo was killed on October 31st, struck in the chest with two bullets. Uh, 3.20 a.m., 147th Street, Frederick Douglass Boulevard. It's rushed to the hospital, pronounced dead. Alpo was 55. All of that stuff was going on down back there in the 80s. I have a question for you about this. So Alpo was from Harlem. He went to jail. He became an informant. He went to jail, came home, went back to Harlem. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And now Alpo is deceased. Right. I asked my brother, I was like, yo, man, why didn't Alpo just like move to Arizona or something like that? My brother said, hey, he's not Alpo in Arizona. Mm. He's only Alpo in Harlem in New York where people know who he was and all the stuff that he did. Mm-hmm. My question is, don't you got to move anyway? 
<laughs> with, with as much shit as he did. Don't you gotta get ghost anyway? They came back and lit this guy up. This guy was 55 years old. Don't you have to leave anyway? Would you leave? I would have been gone. I would never walk the streets of Harlem again. (laughs) I mean, you were sat in jail for decades. You were in a witness protection. His last known address was in Maine, Mm. right? And you, I don't know why you thought you could come back to Harlem. I don't know if you thought people didn't know who you were. I don't know if you thought, maybe if you walked past me, it would have been okay. Maybe, you know, I, don't, I, I don't understand. Maybe he thought he was protected. I, I'm not quite sure. Maybe he wanted to go. I don't know. Maybe he didn't like living a life in Maine. And maybe he wanted, to, I, I have no idea. But it's just wild to me that you were in the witness protection plan because you had testified against so many other people and then you thought you could come back to your old stomping grounds like everything was all good. It was okay. Like it was gravy, but it's not gravy. It's biscuits. He, he was born in Maine where there are no biscuits. No biscuits in Maine. Probably not. Maine probably doesn't have very good biscuits. I wonder kidding. though, I, no I wonder like, is there a bigger narcotic than the streets themselves? Because they, they, these guys can't leave the street life alone. It's like, mm. to, to, like to me, the thing that I love about a guy like, say, a Jay-Z or Nas or any of these other guys is these guys were heavy in the streets. Jay-Z probably a little bit more than Nas, but they grow and they grow past it. Is there anything crazier than like a 45, 50 year old guy that can't leave the street life alone? Isn't the streets more addictive than any drug that you can put up your nose? Mm, I think it depends who you are to the streets, right? Mm. Or I think it also depends if you have the talent, like Jay-Z and Nas had the talent to leave it alone. Right. Had they, if they weren't rappers or even businessmen, I mean, I don't know, you know, if they were that at the same time. Well, I guess Jay-Z, you know, he had a record label and all that stuff. But I, if they didn't have the talent, where would they be? Mm. They might have been on the streets. So it's like people who can't escape or like an Alpo, you were big on the streets. This is, you were a king on the streets. It was a king. So why would you not want to go back to that life as opposed to, just like your brother said, in Maine, who was he? He was I, nobody. I watched these Alpo. addicted to that power. I watched these Alpo videos. And, you know, Alpo's talking about all the stuff that he did. And it's just so matter of fact, Alpo would be like, yeah, you know, I used to ride around with my man, Corey. I ended up having to kill Corey later. <laughs> just be like, what? <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> like, like oh Jesus, like these, these uh, well, it happened. Oh my God. Apple 55. There's probably a lot of people out there that are obviously I'm sure his loved ones are sad, but then there are probably a lot of people out there that go, ah, this is the way the karma crumbles. The I mean, situation it's, like it's that. It's definitely karma in the situation, yeah. but wow. You know, you live by the streets, you die by the streets, right? Yeah. You probably didn't want it any other way. You, uh, you ever been out there on the streets, Rachel? You ever, you have, what's, what's the limit of your street experience? What's the streetest it's ever gotten for Rachel Lindsay? I want to know. Dating somebody in the streets. Mm. As close as I get. Did you ever, have you ever, uh, cause you know, Jay-Z says in Allure or is it in Rock Boys? He says, uh, yeah, I think it's in Rock Boys where he says, shout out to all the women friends that took work cross state for a gentleman. I didn't do that. You you never have taken work cross state for a gentleman. No, See, no. but you're the perfect mule though. Oh, with, with a dad as a federal judge, nobody would suspect anything from her. I'm saying now you're a risky I've never mule. Done, I've never done that though. I've never You've never that. taken a work cross state for a gentleman. Never. Nope. You ever have nope. you ever done anything highly illegal? Like I'm not talking about speeding or smoking a little tweed. I'm talking about, have you ever been involved in anything like highly illegal? If I was, I was not aware of it. Mm, That's the judge's daughter answer right there. That's a judge's daughter. If I was, I had no knowledge of it. So I got to tell you guys a street story that's very funny. Please, please go ahead. It's not me. It's one of my friends who was in the streets, but it's very funny. So there was a scam that was going down in Baton Rouge (laughs) back in the day of making fake checks with a computer program and then going to a check cashing place and then cashing the checks. All right. (laughs) Shit is bad. And (laughs) what you would do is you would have the fake checks and you would make the fake checks 
And then you'd have like very, very honestly, like a patsy or somebody. Normally it was someone you could throw a couple, a couple hundred dollars to or fifty dollars or something like that, walk into the check cashing place and like cash a check for you, right? And then you get the money. You do this over and over and over again. You go to somebody's house, you'd have the program, you make the checks, and then you go cash the checks, whatever. So one day I'm riding with somebody and they have somebody that's going in to cash the check at the check cashing place. <laughs> and uh, the person that they go to cash the checks, if I'm keeping it all the way real, it was normally someone who had an addiction problem. It was very predatory. You know, you get somebody from the neighborhood, and you know, you say, hey, $50. Yeah, you go in there and cash a check. But like, you forget people's will to be free, right? <laughs> you do. The, the guy goes in there and he cashes the check, right? And it looks like he's cashed it, but really they didn't take it. They were tired of getting hit up. The scam had been run all <laughs> over the place. So he's turned around and he's trying to walk out of the check cashing place, but they've locked the door. No. It's one of those ones where they could lock the door from the, from the thing back there. So this dude is freaking out. And he picks up a chair <laughs> and he's banging it on the window of the check cashier place until he bangs out a hole in the window and then he runs and jumps through the hole. <laughs> and, like, and like the whole time my homie that's driving, he has already started to like leave him. And I'm like, bruh, don't leave this dude, bruh. Don't leave this dude, bro. Go back and get him. So he hits it. He goes back and he picks the guy. He picks the dude up and he's hanging on the edge of the car, trying to jump into the car. Just the funniest situation ever. I'm laughing so hard. By the way, I didn't even realize that they were doing the check cash and scam. He just goes, hey, take me to go cash my check real quick. I thought he had a real check to cash. So you were you were an accomplice? There's several times I've been put in situations Aiding like that. Aiding and abetting? Yeah. Mm. Like that same friend, that same friend. <laughs> okay. That friend. same friend. We need to let him, we might need to let him of, go. My, one of my best friends ever. One of my <laughs> closest friends ever. That same friend, like we're going to, uh, we're going to New Orleans. We're getting ready to go to New Orleans. And he's like, yo, I got, you know, I make a stop to make real quick. I stop to make real quick. It's like, what? I was like, yeah. He's like, I just got to pick up some money before we go. And we stopped the car. <laughs> he's about to go in his house and he reaches into the glove compartment and pulls out <gasps> crack cocaine. No, no, no. Crack. <laughs> like a lot of it. And then he takes it into the into the house and does whatever it comes back. I'm like, nigga, <laughs> we didn't drove all the way from Zachary to the bottom with crack cocaine in here. I'm like, bro, no. if we get pulled over, he's like, no. he's like, man, we already know, bro. We already know, bro. If we get pulled over, we know you ratting. I'm like, you fucking right. Rat. Yeah, this ain't mine. Crack, okay. I, you from that moment I saw that I would have just opened the door and walked down the street. Nah, we had to. Go I wouldn't have been Orleans. able to get back in the car. Nope. Nah, we had to go to New Orleans, man. Nope. We had to go to mm -hmm. New Orleans, man. We had to go to New Orleans, and plus we had a stack. Did you ask him if he had anything else in the car? I would be like, I'm searching the car. No, uh -uh. I asked him if there was any other drugs in the car, which was the wrong uh, question obviously. to ask because he was like, no, but there were guns. <laughs> 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 um, there's a pilot under investigation for saying let's go Brandon did you know that let's go Brandon was like a fuck, fuck Joe Biden thing no I did not and I'm shocked that many people knew did you no I didn't I had no idea about let's go Brandon I don't think I give a fuck about let's go Brandon but apparently this started in October 2nd in the NASCAR race um, uh, where the crowd was chanting fuck Joe Biden, Joe, Joe Biden, Joe Biden. And the reporters suggested that they were chanting, let's go, Brandon. So 
there was a uh, uh, a Southwest pilot that was uh, on a flight out of Houston, your neck of the woods. And he finished his announcement by saying, let's go, Brandon. Which means basically fuck Joe Biden. Uh, he's under investigation. And I'll be honest with you. I don't know why. Uh, what do you mean you don't know why? I don't know why he's under investigation. Why should? Why is he under investigation? What did he do? Is he not, not allowed? Supposed, is he not, not supposed a, to talk about that? Talk about what? Politics. Is that a rule? Yeah, I'm almost. I, I mean, I don't have it in front of me, but it violates some type of code. Like you can't share your own personal beliefs and political affiliations. I believe. I, I, like in the article, I read it. I guess it's some employee or a uh, policy of Southwest. Hmm. Airlines. So there's a policy in Southwest Airlines that said you can't share your political stuff over the flight. I'm, I'm not sure it's written that way, but I recall reading that in the article. So if if you were so if you were doing a Southwest flight, right, and you mm -hmm. said Black Lives Matter, you would be apparently you can't say that you can't you'd be subject to investigation and termination from southwest if you said that i guess so let me According tell you something let me tell you something what? if i if there was like a a funny little code for fuck donald trump and i could slot it in there i definitely would and you definitely lose your job maybe i don't think this is that big of a deal I, you know and there's something else about this is like it's people have to have the right not to like we get we we clutch our pearls but when it was time to say fuck donald trump i want to be able to say fuck donald trump the let's go brandon thing he slid deciding into why i have an investigation about the guy doesn't like joe biden he wants to say fuck joe biden but he, you know <laughs> it's deeper than that because it's also up like this whole thing with southwest airlines and these federal mandates and pilots and employees having to get vaccinated so there's this whole movement of pilots that are upset about this that this is southwest originally said that everyone had to get vaccinated and then they took it back and said they were going to do something else to accommodate everyone. So it, I guess it goes deeper than that. And that you're letting people know when you, where you stand and you're an extension of the company that you're representing. You're wearing their logo. You're flying their plane. And it makes it seem like Southwest is on board that same way. So I understand it from a company's point that it's like, feel the way that you want to feel. But you don't need to say, let's go, Brandon, which is so stupid anyway. This is what I said. Have, I would have been like, who's South, Brandon? Southwest said, Southwest does not condone employees sharing their personal political opinions while on the job. The airline would not say if the pilot had been suspended or remarked, saying it just doesn't comment on employee statuses. Hmm. It's just unnecessary, right? I just don't, I'm, I'm, it doesn't I'm, bother me. I'm trying me. to get to point. No, I, I'm trying to get. Listen, if I was on it and they, I was, if I was on the flight and he said, "Let's go, Brandon," I would be like, "Who's Brandon?" Somebody would explain it to me, and I would be like, "Well, that sucks." Like, I don't, I don't know how I would feel. I mean, I'm just trying to get to point A to point B. Mm -hmm. So it, I, it doesn't personally offend me, but I understand why Southwest has to react because apparently enough uh, people on the plane didn't like it. Right. I don't like when pilots get on and talk that much anyway. Unless there's an issue, don't talk to me. I say don't talk to me if there's an issue. <laughs> That's what I need I to say. put on my seatbelt. I'm going to have turbulence. Mm -hmm. If there's some, if we have to have an emergency landing, I want to know. Now nah, that's the time when you don't talk. That's the time when you just be up there doing your fucking thing. Do your fucking shit. Let me tell you something else about this. I just don't like the whole idea. It, audible gas from the crowd because he said, let's go, Brandon. It's like I think that's an ex it was reported from a reporter. There was on audible the gasps. Like, I'm saying, was, well, like you're you're that. He said, let's go, Brandon. I'm like, oh, there's I saw a guy that was driving uh, his car. His his big rig bought me on my way when I was going to box and it was said he said fuck Donald he said fuck Joe Biden it said there's a big flag and it said fuck you if you voted for him when I I drove by the guy I yelled out of my window nah fuck you and then I honked my horn and I laughed and it, you gave him exactly what he wanted that's what I wanted but forget about what he wanted think about what i wanted i wanted to say yeah if not see remember what you have to remember rachel is it's never fuck me 
It's, it's fuck so, you. Okay. Listen, your examples are not one and the same. I just need you to know that. But thank you for that story. You saw that again in LA? Yeah, it was uh, on the 101. Look, LA is dicey. People think that it's not. LA is dicey. LA can get dicey, man. Okay. Very important news. Very important news. Uh, another victory in the Julius Jones situation. Now, here's the thing. We had talked to you guys Thursday mm-hmm. about the stay that was granted to Julius Jones. It was overturned so quickly that we did not get a chance to update you before the podcast came out on Friday. They wasted no time and actually put a man named John Grant to death uh, in another botched execution, should I say. Mm. Um uh, very I cruel uh, because we shouldn't be putting people to death. No, I agree. I, I, you know, I'm not for it either, but I'm just saying, mm-hmm. like, I thought well. they stayed, they stayed at, no, I thought they stayed executions in the state of Oklahoma for a few years because they had several botched ones. And I thought they were supposed to have rectified the situation. And then we, ha- there's another one. It's unclear whether or not you're anti the death penalty because you said maybe okay. for some people. You said yeah, for who some. was it I said for? I said for the, the killers of Ahmad Arbery. Yes, I did. So you'd say you'd die with the death penalty for them? For the way they killed him. It's shaky, Rach. Sorry. You can't be, you're a part time death penalty. I, I, I mean, if you want, I, I'm not going to take that back. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I think the, they should die the same way that they killed him. So you want to have the Hunger Games with them where we like run them down and shoot them. Look, I'm not about to, I wouldn't stand in the way of it, but I'm saying I'm, you know, I'm anti-death penalty, but I, I feel the sentiment. Emotionally, yeah. I'm with you. I'm going to wave the flag. Go! <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> the Oklahoma Prison Board has sided with Julius Jones, says that the death sentence should be commuted. The Pardon and Parole Board of Oklahoma is calling on Governor Kevin Stitt <laughs> Stop it. to commute the death sentence of Julius Jones. The board recommended in a three to one vote Monday that the governor alter jo- Jones is sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole, according to the Associated Press. Now, uh, it's my information. Uh, what I've been led to gather is that Governor Stitt in this situation was leaning very heavily to accepting whatever the pardon and parole board decided um, that this would be because they have to. OK, um, this would be th- th- a large percentage about what he based his decision on. So if we were to believe that, then it would seem that Governor Stitt would uh, vote to save the life of Julius Jones. Okay. There's a couple of things here that we should consider. Julius Jones maintains his innocence. So Julius Jones is not simply asking uh, for his death penalty to be commuted or for him to be left to live the rest of his days in prison. Julius Jones is asking for his release. Now, there is some hope if this were to happen, that that could happen because there is the possibility of parole. Uh, We are doing more digging to find out exactly what that would look like when Julius would be up for parole. If there's any uh, legal 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 maneuvering to be done to grant him even a a new trial in this matter. Uh, But it seems as if if Governor Stitt is good on his word uh, that he would be uh, spared to death penalty, which would be scheduled to go down on November 18th. So you've seen all of this. You've been we've been do, following the story of Julius Jones pretty hard here for the last couple of weeks. What are your thoughts here? What are your what's your deal? I mean, everything seems to be moving in a positive way in regards to Julius Jones, which is great. I mean, you if you guys have been following along, you saw we had the family on here, um, supporters, advocates uh, for Julius Jones. And I know one of the things that they talked about 
in great detail was the fact that I believe it was the attorney general and someone else who were trying to remove people from the board because the board looked like they were going to vote in favor of parole for Julius Jones. So now here we are. And what whoever was against that, obviously it didn't work because the board voted in favor of getting of, of uh, Julius Jones getting parole at this point to me. This the governor's job is to accept the recommendation that the board is giving you. I mean, what that is what they do. That is what they're for. They're supposed to be experts in this matter to determine what the the inmates should receive. I don't know what outside knowledge Governor Stitt could have to where he would go against what the board's recommendation is when that's their very job other than some type of personal bias. So I'm fully, I mean, you never know what people are going to do, but I'm fully expecting him to do exactly what he's supposed to do, which is give clemency to Julius Jones. Politically, it might be dicey for Governor Stitt. Correct. But you understand what I'm saying? Yes. The, The board is there for a reason. And you're supposed to take their recommendation. And I'd be, I, I, I just, we haven't, heard, I, we haven't heard from him, correct? He's got a couple of weeks to chew on this. Might be better for him to let things die down here a little bit, just so that people aren't on his ass. Because remember, if he does uh, grant clemency to Julius Jones, um, the family of Paul Howe, the businessman in this situation who uh, was allegedly killed by Julius Jones, is going to be very upset. Uh, everyone here wants justice to be done in this case. But when we say justice, we have to remember that there are victims here as well. Paul Howell is a victim and his family thinks at least that the person responsible for his death uh, is in jail. So there will be a wound reopened for them. Julius Jones has maintained that he understands that, that he wants justice for the Howell family as well, but that justice will not be served by putting him to death or keeping him in prison for something that he did not do. That the only way that true justice will be served is to reexamine this case and then look at it to try to find out who actually killed Paul Howell. So that's what's going on down there. Uh, look, uh, Governor Stitt is under the proverbial micro- microscope there politically. It's interesting. It's just, let's, let's take a break. Okay. Ice Cube. It's another salvo in the fight against the oppressive vaccine. Ice Cube has exited. Sony Comedy called, oh, hell no. He said, oh, hell no to the goddamn COVID-19 vaccine. Oh, hell no. That's what Ice Cube said. He's left this Sony Comedy because he won't get vaccinated, reportedly leaving nine million on the table. Nine million dollars. He's going to get vaccinated. Okay. Uh, they partnered on the project back in June. It was going to shoot this winter in Hawaii with Kataio Sakuri, uh, the filmmaker behind Netflix's breakout comedy Bad Trip, which was fucking hysterical, uh, is the director of this. Um, producers on the movie made the request that the cast on the project would need to be vaccinated. And Ice Cube said, no, pass up $9 million. Mm. Rach, what do you think? I mean, <laughs> I, I, if I could walk away from $9 million, it must be nice that he has the option to do that. That's, mm-hmm. all, that's, that's, all, that's all I thought. I mean, again, we talked about it at great lengths when it comes to Kyrie. If that's a decision that you want to make, it's a personal decision. You have every right to do that. I'm not surprised that he's not vaccinated or doesn't and doesn't want to, doesn't want to be forced to, to do, to take on a role. But man, it must be nice to be able to walk away from $9 million. Mm. $9 million. Let me tell you something here. I'll be honest with you. God damn it. I don't care. Next man up. Next man up. In the role? Yeah, Ice Cube doesn't want the vaccine. I'll do it. I'll be in the movie. Well, who wouldn't? I'll be in the movie. I don't need nine. What you need? What you doing it for? I do it for 1.5. I'm going to need you to raise your price. No. I mean, that's that's how you let people know that they really get in the steal. 
I'll do it for one point five. I think they know. I think they know, Van. What would you? What would be <laughs> your? Because think about it. We get torn apart. Nah, you know why I would need. You know why I would need four. I'll tell you why I would need four. Because we would get painted as the biggest fucking coons on the internet. All the Kyrie people would be like, Ice Cube took a stand against the oppressive microchip vaccine, and here comes the TMZ coon Van Lathan to That's do it I'm for saying. half the money. And so I, I need a little bit more than the one point five. People you know. already think that about me from doing Bachelorette. I'm good. I'll take five. They think you're the Bachelorette cool? They don't They don't think that, do you? Well, I mean, that's, you know, it's I was literally just having this conversation with someone. You know, I didn't get a lot of support from, and I get it. We didn't watch the show. I didn't watch the show before either. But it's not like I got a whole bunch of support and backing from black people, black media in any kind of way when I when I did the show. Other than, oh, they, they chose first Black Bachelorette and then I was probably like, the butt of jokes or something but no do you feel nope. in a certain way over that that they didn't support absolutely wow i do because when i went to do the bachelorette i gave a full list of black media uh -huh. that i told them i was like this is media that you've never reached out to before and i want to make sure that mm -hmm. i'm talking to the community and to the people and i want them to hear from me and hear what i'm about not just assume what i'm about because i'm on the show and I gave them all of that. And the only black media that I got to do was Essence. Essence was super supportive. Mm -hmm. And Big Boy's Neighborhood. Big big Boy! So do you think, though, that like it's because... So you say it's more because black people don't really care about The Bachelor. So if they don't care about The Bachelor, then they're obviously not going to care about the black Bachelor, right? right? Correct. All right. So like then... I, I'm going to be honest because I didn't watch the show. I don't know if I would have cared. Yeah. yeah you know what I mean? I would have been, like, oh. been like, oh, I would. I would have been like, oh, OK, right. it was about time. Yeah. But for me being in the seat, it was important for me not to neglect black media. Right. And I would have thought it would have been something that some people want to talk about, like even if they're joking with me, mm -hmm. just talk, support me. You so know, because but of I, that. But that's why I think that they, they didn't think that I wanted that support from them. That's why I say I take the five million. They five already million. think whatever. So. You were on The Bachelor and then I was on TMZ. Did we miss an opportunity to name this podcast Two Coons in a Room? I just can't. Maybe that's I what guess. it should have been called. <laughs> Hell you know? no. <laughs> Two but, Coons but. in a Room. <laughs> <laughs> on this week, we have Jason Whitlock. <laughs> oh, shit. Can you just imagine the opening credits though? It shows you in the in the the workroom of TMZ. Mm -hmm. It shows me standing there, you know, kissing riding, all these men, these non-black men. Riding your horse down Rodale. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> we decided to combine our Uncle Tom coon powers. Our coonery. Yes. Our coonery. To give you two coons, two coons in a room. In a room. <laughs> Ice Cube. What, What's the is? theme music? What's the theme? Oh, uh, something disrespectful. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know? Like some minstrel show shit. You know, we come out. We're gonna this week. We're gonna tell you why Kid Rock is the is, is who you should be listening to this fall. <laughs> Two coons in a room. Let me oh tell you God. something. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Uh, like, look, guys. I wish I cared more about Ice Cube passing up the money. I mean, it's gonna be a story now. Whenever somebody, when some celebrity doesn't want to get vaccinated, he doesn't have to get vaccinated. I don't know what kind of science Ice Cube believes in. It doesn't make a difference. Does it send the wrong message about vaccination? Sure. Cool. But I will say this. It does. But the vaccination issue, I, I'm sorry. I keep saying this. I know you guys don't like when I say this. It might be one that we really just have to punt on. We might, we, we might just have to put out as much good information as we can about the vaccine and to just let people make their decisions because it, it's the issue itself is getting weaponized in a way. Uh, and the fight oh, yeah. is only f putting that whole thing on steroids. So whatever, Ice Cube. Absolutely. I Googled two coons in a room just to see if it was out there already. Just uh -huh. to see if somebody was as ignorant as we were just being on this podcast. Google said, did you mean two coins yeah. in a room? <laughs> <laughs> two coons in a room. So Jennifer Lopez, J-Lo. 
she was there with LL Cool J, right? Remember you were telling me about that? She also wanted to talk about her first love scene in a movie called Money Train. I don't know if you guys remember Money Train, but Money Train was a movie with Woody Harrelson and Wesley Snipes. A dynamic comedy duo. Okay. Um, they had been together in uh, White Men Can't Jump, which is one of the greatest sports movies of all time. They came back together in Money Train. They were two cops who were going to rob the Money Train. I love the movie. And it was early Jennifer Lopez at the point when you would look at Jennifer Lopez and you'd ask yourself, uh, is this the most beautiful person that you've ever seen before in your life? Jennifer Lopez was doing her thing. She's a beautiful lady. Beautiful lady. She says that filming her love scene with Wesley Snipes on Money Train was horrible. Horrible. Quote, when you first started working professionally, you pushed the boundaries of what you should and shouldn't do. And I didn't think I had the right to say no. Like, no, I'm not doing this. So we did it and it was tough. Wesley was wonderful about it in the scene that he was like, what's going to make you more comfortable? And I was like, bring music. Play it loud. She said both of her male co-stars hit on her often, although Harrelson took a more comedic approach than Snipes. Wesley, even though I had a boyfriend at the time, went full court press. He was flirting with me. I mean, you always flirt with your co-stars. It's harmless. Then he just started getting a little bit more serious. She said during her interview uh, with Movie Line, he would invite us all out together and then at the end of the night he dropped me off last and tried to kiss me i'd be like wesley please i'm not interested in you like that he got really upset about it shortly after snipes responded to lopez's side of the story offering up his own take on the situation what happened was she had never done a love scene before she was absolutely terrified i was given instructions from the direction to make her feel good that was my job the actor told movie line so all of this stuff is coming back up do you see any inappropriateness in all of this? Does this make you look at Wesley Snipes any differently than, than you already did? And the question is this, because this was back in 1998, 97, 95. what is the line, what is the line between persistence and harassment? Um, I'll read you the sentence. Sure. <laughs> that crosses the line. Read me the sentence. Uh, let me scroll down. He would invite us all out together. And then at the end of the night, he dropped me off last and try to kiss me. I told I'd be like, I'm not interested in you like that. And he got upset. Line crossed. This woman has already expressed that this was her first love scene. She has already expressed that she was uncomfortable. She was going outside of her comfort zone. She was doing something she had never done before. He was aware of that. Seems like everyone on set was. And it was his job as an experienced actor to make her feel comfortable. That does not include trying to kiss her when she doesn't want to be kissed. You've crossed the line. You are now making it even more uncomfortable because you're making it more of a hostile situation. You can make somebody comfortable rather than trying to force yourself physically on them. So, yeah, a line was crossed. And the thing is, Wesley, in his response, didn't deny it. Hmm, he didn't. Now, I guess my question is, why is this all coming back up now? I thought that, too. Somebody found this. Hey, hey Donnie, jump in here. Did somebody find this interview with Wesley Snipes and Jennifer Lopez and then resurface it? Like, what happened? Why did this all come back up? Yeah, this was uh, on Hot New Hip Hop's homepage. Mm. And it's a resurfacing of a 1998 interview from a, a site called Movie Line. I'm not sure exactly why this is coming back up now, but um, it is. Well, yeah. so maybe she said, because people so she, weren't paying attention to it in 1998. Maybe it wasn't. She says she felt uncomfortable, so we did it, and it was horrible. We were both completely naked with nothing between us except a sock on his boner. I oh was so God. naive then. Now I would have pillows and covers, whatever, to present contact, but I didn't know any better. So here's this famous actor basically humping my leg and pawing away at my breast and kissing them. It was awful. I felt violated. 
I swore I'd never work with him again. Wow. And is this your first time hearing this story? Yeah. Mine too. 1998 is a totally different time when it comes to respecting how women felt in situations like that. She said that he wanted to take the relationship further. She had a boyfriend at the time, which Snipes was aware of. So here's the deal. It, it, like that's different than what she just said. Cause what, what, what she said before was he was great about it. He tried to make her feel comfortable, but now this part says that if she was actually uncomfortable and that Wesley made it really weird. It seems like he initially tried to make her feel comfortable. And then it seems like he took it to another level. That's horrifying. And the thing, and what's even worse is that she expressed how she felt, it seems like, at least I'm gathering, and nobody stopped it. Nobody could see that she was uncomfortable. Nobody, you know what I mean? Like, there was nobody on set to say, like, do you need a break? Do you need a minute? What? I'm so assuming who, it wasn't so all in one take. Here? Do you blame the director who doesn't listen to the, pro, the, the, the actress protest, the fact that she doesn't want to do this? Or do you, blame, do you blame Wesley Snipes? Both. Well, Wesley Snipes is in the love scene. They're doing the love scene. Is there a way? I'm asking the question. I don't know. I've never done a love Bad, scene before. But then you're hearing what she was saying was happening off camera. Yeah, let's look at it again. Yeah. So it's, it's probably, like, it's not good. I'm not, I'm, yeah, he might have been playing his role as far as they had to have a love scene. Mm -hmm. But she's talking about him humping her and having a boner. And clearly yeah. he wanted, he wanted more from her because offset, he was trying to get at her. Offset. And I, I'm sure she, I'm sure she felt like, was I doing something? in the scene that made him feel like whoa, whoa, I, I whoa, wanted whoa. more. They added the scene halfway through filming. So this she is, didn't sign on for this. She didn't sign on for this. See what I'm saying? She yeah, didn't that's disgusting. sign I'm on disgusted. for this. I'm disgusted. I, so don't think, I don't think about Wesley Snipes at all. But the fact that the, now that you say this, I'm disgusted. I'm not, I won't be interviewing him on red carpets. You won't. Why don't you? You should interview him and you should. Ask, <laughs> you should interview him and you should ask him about it. You should say, Wesley, you know what? Do you You're have right. any response to Jennifer Lopez saying that you violated her recently the in 1998? Yeah. Yeah. No, nah, just, just ask him about it. But I will tell you that this is um that it is. Ooh, it's troubling. How many uh, other Jennifer uh, stories are it is? There? It is a very sobering commentary on the times mm. that an actress at that point could say she felt violated in a love scene and like it not even make waves if that happened now obviously it would be a much much bigger deal but she said she felt violated in a love scene it didn't even make any waves didn't even make any it waves. just makes me wonder too if it's because she wasn't as big of a name because she's latina He's black. Like, I wonder if it had been different races. Would it have made a scene? Would it have made news? I'm, 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 I'm like really thinking this one through. What do you mean? So you feel if like she the was fact white, would it, if she was white, would it have been different? Oh, yeah. If she was white, uh, then maybe it plays directly into the racial stereotype. But maybe she's depowered because she was a Latinx lady. That's very true. Saying. And also, she was on the come up and he was Wesley Snipes. She was Passenger 57 exactly. and all of that. It sucks. It 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 reminds you of some of the times people just say things like um, when you talk about uh, Harvey Weinstein and all that stuff that was going on, and they say, you know, why do those girls let that happen? Why do those girls do that? Because it's not they don't feel like they have any way to say no. Mm -hmm. You feel like it's That's career suicide. Yeah, and it's yeah. interesting to me that that is an interesting thing to me. Dave Chappelle says, hey, taking a man's likelihood is akin to killing him. And everybody goes, yay, we completely understand that. If you take somebody's livelihood over stuff, people, over stuff that people say, it's like killing them. But those same people who understand that 
taking a man's livelihood is akin to killing him don't understand why people in situations like this feel pressured to do things that they otherwise wouldn't do in order to protect those same livelihoods right it's the same exact fucking thing exactly if harvey weinstein asks you to do something and you don't want to fucking do it you might think i'm never going to get to be in shakespeare in love unless i do this your livelihood, your life is being dangled in front of you. It's the same shit. It's crazy. It's crazy. Let's take a break. Okay, so you're always told that when you see something, say something. Unless you're a Negro. A black chief diversity officer has lost his job after flagging racial bias. It's guy's name is joseph b hill it was four day from four days from starting a new position as vice president chief equity diversity and inclusion officer at memorial herman health system in houston god damn that's a long ass title it's a bit it's it's huge it's a long houston. ass title oh what memorial herman is big in houston oh yeah it's a whole medical center like yeah, what did, what do they do there like medicine <laughs> I, I know that they have a huge, um, uh, like a cancer research. I just don't know if it's Memorial Her- Memorial Harmon or mm-hmm. if it's um, something called something else. But no, it's it's huge down there. You know, yeah. like there's a med- there's the medical city is what they call it. The whole the medical area. city, medical city. Like you go there, it looks yeah. like downtown. You're like, oh, is that downtown? And you're but like, it's no, all that's medical. A, that's medical. Yeah. Oh, no, that's mm. medical city. Well, they fucked over this guy. He got uh, a note that said, we regret to inform you. Oh, Herman's human resources vice president, Lori Knowles. Knowles. And they're from Houston. Houston. I wonder if Beyonce's fucking family is acting up. Uh, It says, we regret to inform you that we are rescinding the offer of employment dated July 21st, 2021. We appreciate your interest in the position and wish you much success going forward. Hill says he was shocked. He was shocked. He says that part of the reason why his entire employment was invalidated there was because he was overall too sensitive about race issues. Okay. They say that he was, uh, his, the, the company's lawyer said it was uncomfortable Uh, They were uncomfortable with the fact that Hill was inquiring about hiring staff to build his team. Okay, he uh, didn't. He wanted a larger relocation budget that he rented and charged a luxury car to the company. They said all of this stuff. But also they said he was overall too sensitive about race issues. Now I have a take here. And I don't know if this is fair to. Pee Wee Herman Memorial Hospital down there in in Houston. Okay, I don't know if this is fair. Okay, so let's look at the things that they said about this guy. Joseph B. Hill. I don't know why he doesn't just change his name to Joe Hill. That's a <laughs> Joseph B. Hill. I'm not gonna lie, it seems like this nigga thinks he's pretty important. Joseph B. No, Hill. Let his name the man, is Joe Hill. That's his that's his government name, his and name he is, is perfectly Joe allowed Hill. to use it. His name is Joe Hill, whatever. Um, so they say that Joe Hill was uncomfortable with uh, Joe Hill was inquiring about hiring staff to build his team. Maybe they were annoyed by that. They said Joe Hill wanted a larger relocation budget. Sometimes that happens. You know, you want a larger relocation budget. You're moving from fucking St. Louis to Houston. You want a little bit sure. more cash in the coffers. Okay, cool. That Joe Hill charged a luxury car to the company. I'm telling you, it's Joe Hill. It's not Joseph That's B. Hill. What- it's Joe Hill. <laughs> That's one. Okay, and that he was overall too sensitive about race issues. Let me tell you how I am. Of those things that they just lamented about Joe Hill, I don't hear any of them except for the last one now. Exactly. They just fucking threw the rest of those out of the whole thing. Ever, ever. They might have all been true, but him mm-hmm. being sensitive about race issues should not in any way affect his employment. Right. 
So look, if he charged a luxury car to the company, that's obviously frowned upon. Was it, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's obviously frowned upon. But I'm inclined to believe, maybe I'm being sensitive, and you can tell me if I am, Rachel, that just like Joe Hill believes, that the fact that he is too sensitive about race issues, that something was said or done that made these people uncomfortable with the fact that Joseph B. Hill wasn't going to be taking their fucking bullshit. And so right. that's how I look at this. This is if if this is even this is ridiculously silly for this company to put that in writing. That you t- <laughs> couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. What the well, fuck? no. This is you know Texas. They've been showing their hand a lot lately, and they basically just said we don't care. They ba- I, there was a there was a quote from the article where he says something lo- along the lines of like what they assi- essentially want to do is bring people in who look different, but not necessarily people who think different. From there you them. go. Nothing else says that more than that last line. They want a figurehead of somebody who can just basically be a mascot but that isn't going to make or implement any type of change. They don't want to see it. They don't want to hear it. And that's why Joseph B. Hill couldn't be there. Plain and simple. They're not even trying to hide it. We didn't bring you in here to be sensitive about race. We brought you in here because you're a man of color and that's what we need to fill this position. But don't do anything. They might have been accept- They might have been okay with him charging the car. But don't be sensitive about race. It depends on what kind of car. See, Joe what probably, kind of car is acceptable? What see, did Joe get? Joe got a Charger. What did Joseph get? Joseph, I'm, see, Joe would get a Charger. Be like, get the Hemi with it, stunt with his friends in Galveston. You know, he leaves on, on, on Friday. Nobody's stunting in Galveston. They, I was there. It's not, it's not I, 1998. I was there for the Kappa Beach party. It was, they were As, stunting. Again, stop taking it back 20 years ago. Joe was getting the charger, right? <laughs> See, if he would have got a Prius, the company would have like applauded him. They'd be like, look, that's economical. That's what we like a to Prius. see. A Prius, a Prius. No. But Joe got a, a charger. A pickup truck. A pickup Joe, truck. Joe might have got, if it was 98, Joe might have got a Sebring. The, the, the Sebring. I used to date a guy with a Sebring. I, know I used you, to of date a guy did. with of a Sebring. Of course you did. Of course you did. <laughs> the Sebring was crushing people's heads back in the day. Ooh. It might literally, there are like four or five cars that if you had them back in the day, that shit might as well have been a Bentley. I don't know why. Yeah. That shows you how what broke else? we wait, were. Wait, what? The Sebring was one. Shout out to Shaheen. The Sebring was <laughs> one. The, uh, the RAV4. If you had a the Toyota, the, if you had a Toyota Rav Four, the Mustang, the Mustang, that little pitly must- ass Mustang, <laughs> that little pitly ass Mustang, and, and I'm gonna say I don't know about the Rav Four, but I'm gonna say it's a tie between an oh, no, Explorer, not the Rav Four, not the Rav Four, the Forerunner. Okay, that's what I was about to say. It's, it's yeah. the Explorer, the Forerunner, the Expedition. Right. Yeah. Well, see, rich. I'm not gonna lie. If you had an Expedition, you out, you you rat, you rich. That's rap money. The expedition was big, man. It was big back then. The expedition it was, was big. big. Back then. But, but like the four, no, it's the not, Denali, the, not the Rav Four, the, though. <laughs> yep, the Forerunner, not the Rav Four. If you had the, a Forerunner, I was gonna say the Forerunner, the Explorer, but you said you got you got it. Yes, the Forerunner, the Forerunner. My boy, <laughs> my boy, uh, my boy Ryan had a Forerunner. We used to put the getting that Forerunner. He put he had put three twelves back there. You know, Ian used to go to sleep. Ian is is a narcoleptic. This nigga has really got a problem. If y'all go to at Ian Vaughn on Instagram and just just put in the comments, just put wake up. If you're listening, <laughs> seriously, please guys. Because Ian's going to hear this. Y'all he never do stuff that I ask y'all to do. That's okay. Y'all don't want to really. But at Ian Vaughn, at I-A-N-V-O-N, just go on his Instagram on any picture and just say wake up. Comment wake up. Van says, wake up. Ian just goes and falls asleep anywhere. So we'd be driving to New Orleans. Ian would fall asleep. And Ryan really? would put that fucking beat on his back. Like as soon as he would fall asleep, he he cranked them twelves up. Boom, 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 boom. Tickle boom 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 boom. But the people that put that A ball MJG on robbery on. Just wake the fuck up, nigga. We trying to go turn up. And the forerunner. That's not what Joe had, though. Poor Joe. Look, listen, (laughs) this is the thing. Um, You guys, when you get rid of somebody, 
Pee Wee Herman Medical Center, don't say it's about race. I know, like, don't say it's too sensitive to race issues. What does that even mean? So if they, so how do they, how do they gauge that? Do they put you in a, like, let's say they, they have the, the hiring coordinator drop an N word and see what you do. If you let it slide, you're hired. <laughs> if you know. get mad, you're he fired. He didn't even start. So I don't even know how he could have been too sensitive. He hadn't even started. He didn't even his first day. He literally got fired before he even started the job. Also, PT Cruiser. Yeah, but see, that was different. Like the PT Cruiser had a very short run in Baton Rouge, though. It did in Texas, too. But when you had it, you had it. Black Florida students <laughs> suspended for confronting white white classmates racist snapchat video oh uh the daily beast is reporting that several black students were suspended for five days from yuli high school in florida after confronting two of their white peers who created a racist snapchat video parents are upset with the district's response saying that the punishment was unfair considering the white students didn't receive any punitive action in the video the two white students can be seen saying racial slurs and laughing at what appears to be their black classmates one of them appears on camera with a white hooded sheet over his head so much fun uh the video was sent to a group of black students by another classmate who received the video upon confrontation between the two groups a fight broke out among the teenagers Parents had a meeting Wednesday night to discuss the situation and decide a course of action. However, the school district said it couldn't punish the two white students for the video because the recording took place before they arrived at school. This is a little bit of a quagmire to some. Mark Durham, the school's assistant superintendent of instruction, said this. While schools do have jurisdiction to discipline students for their offline, off-campus behavior under certain circumstances, this case didn't meet the criteria. In this case, the video took place during the summer prior to the beginning of the school year. The two students in the video were not yet students at YHS. Very, very interesting situation here. A bit of a quagmire here. Rachel, what do you Mm-mm. think? Because according to the school's code of conduct, the school board retains the right to assign more severe consequences than normal if the offense seems to be racially motivated. Hmm. I think here it is very obvious that this has nothing else to do with anything but race this is entirely racially motivated and my thing is you either do all or nothing either they you both you know you punish for having a fight on the school grounds and you punish for doing something that's racist and that offends an entire group of people including the very students that you're supposed to care about if this school board this superintendent this principal were serious about some type of reconciliation about having students get along about ending this type of behavior and not making it okay and giving loophole to certain students. So if I'm a racist student, I know exactly what I need to do to avoid getting punishment. Then the school would step up and actually do something, not punish either side, have them come together, talk about, have some type of town hall like you did with these parents. What happened? Why it happened? Why it was wrong? Why you were offended? Something Don't punish either side and bring them together to fix it so it doesn't happen again. Instead, you've given them escape, not escape, but a cop out. Mm. So now I know how to do this again. So here's the thing, though. I think and I'm going to ask you this. It says that they didn't go to the school yet. So if they didn't go to the school when they made the video, how can the school punish them for making the video? They're in the school district. Right. That's what it sounds like. That's why I said I gave you something from the school board. So I know, I'm assuming but, is, that, is that the district or is that I, just particular I, I, to that same high school? I know, one high school. I'm, but what I'm saying is. I don't know that you can actually be punished if if I do something in the summer and then I come to the school. I don't know that the school can punish me for that. But don't. But I what I said is all or nothing. So if you're not going to punish them because there is a loophole to this, then don't punish the other guys for being so upset. Yeah, maybe they shouldn't have started a fight, but they're so upset. And obviously they feel like they have to take matters into their own hands because school didn't do anything about it. Why don't you try to fix this? So nothing like this or you try to at least prevent it from happening again. 
I said, don't punish either one. If you can't punish them, don't punish them. Well, I'm I'm not for punishments when it comes down to uh, fucking a racist stuff. I'm not for punishments. I will say this is an interesting situation, though. If we're keeping it all, if we're keeping it all the way real, I guess my thing is. Was the video itself sent over the summer or was the video sent when these kids Well, see a third party sent the video. So a third party sent the video. So because a third party sent the video, the kids who were actually in the video didn't even send the video because I would I would make the I would make the assessment that if you send me the video, even if you made it during the summer, if you send it to me while we're in school, then. I have the right, but it was sent to somebody else from something that happened before. So, but I'm going to be real with you though. I'm going to be real with you. Sometimes it's worth it to get your suspension. Sometimes I, I'll be honest with you. Sure. It's very hard not to suspend the black kids in this situation, but I, we, we never want, we always want to be on the right side of the law, but we can't always be. Sometimes you just got to go fuck it. Get these motherfucking hands for what you did. And if you got to sit down for a couple of days, go ahead and sit down. I'm not against them starting a ruckus, but I'm saying as far as the school's I'm punishment, it seems like the hands are kind of tied in that situation. I'm not sure how that goes, but sometimes... Sometimes you got to eat that. That's a, that's one thing that doesn't happen. See, we, don't, like, we don't we don't we don't look at the sacrifice that way. Now nah, they're not gonna get fucked with again. Put, true. Put some on their ass. I don't give a but, fuck. But like the same way we talk about the n word, and that's a n-word. violent word, and we don't know what was said in that video. If I see you with the sheet on your head, I'm oh I'm, you got to get these I'm hands. Fearing. Yeah. I'm fearing for my life. Yeah. So I feel like I got to defend myself, which is why I don't think they should be suspended. I I haven't seen the contents of the video, but I know there was a hood. I know there was yeah. a white hood. That's right. all I need to know. I love how they keep acting like they keep saying that these kids are going to forget all about racism. Oh, it's just to keep going and forget about it. They're going to forget about it. Ra- they still doing the same clan shit from 100 years ago. That's because <laughs> that's still- a lie that they fed to us when we were growing up. We don't see, I don't see color. You know what I mean? We're all one. That's because that's, that's what they did before. Look how militant we became, Rachel. The two coons in a room. Two coons in a room, man. Look how militant we became. We became so fucking <laughs> militant. We got forced militant. to become this way. Yeah, they really, we was cooling they before made us. The Bachelor and before TMZ got us. We was cooling. We was yeah. like, hey, hey, We were cooning. Hi. We were cooning. We were cooning. <laughs> we were cooning. <laughs> yeah. and, now, and now look they at us. They made us. us. We about to start a Nation of Islam sect out here. Like, we going nuts. Well, maybe not. Probably not that far. Uh, cause, <laughs> you know, so shout out to them. Whatever. Um, now, look, uh, I will say this. I'll, I'll say that uh, in a situation like this, sometimes this is when the community has to come together. You know, you come together. If the students get suspended, uh, maybe you come together. You make sure they don't miss any schoolwork. I would take them to Knott's Berry Farm or to an amusement park. I would fly this in the face of the school. If these were my kids, okay, sure, they got to sit down for a couple of days. Okay, come sit down. Come sit down. We'd be going to the fucking Staples Center. We'd be going to a fucking Dodger <laughs> game. Like, we would be like, hey, uh, we go to Disneyland wearing Black Lives Matter stuff. Like, you know, it's not a punishment. It's not a punishment. I'm letting them know that sometimes in life, you got to fucking get it. Uh, by the way, Yuli High School in Florida is having a rough week. This is the school where Derrick Henry went. Oh, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, Derrick Henry. Uh, so here's the thing. If you do want to see violence against white people uh, at Yulee High, just go look at Derrick Henry's high school tape. It's fucking insane. Just fucking insane watch him dog people. I, I, I really believe, to be honest with you, that... It's certain niggas that when they're in high school, they should just be like, no, you can't play. Like Derrick Henry, Jadavian Clowney, a couple of guys like that. No, it's like no. It's a Darnell oh, dude Dockett. from Georgia. Who? It's a dude from Georgia who's like 6'6", 340 DN. They're putting him on the list for the highs. But when you yeah. see him, see, it's bro. like, oh my God. Just serving these kids up. These kids just want to play. I just want to play a piece of football. I just can't wait. I was on JV last week. 
and now I got promoted to VAR. And to get out there, then you gotta fucking tackle Derrick Henry. End up with CTE. You can't fucking go to college. It's crazy. Um, oh, Derrick Henry. RIP to anybody, including myself, who had him on your fantasy team. Yes, huh. Derrick Henry has hurt himself. He has a foot injury, and it looks like he's gonna miss the entire season. Uh, also, it looks like Jameis Winston could I be out saw. for an extended amount of time as well. Um, also, it looks like Texas is fucking trash. It looks like Texas lost again. It looks like Texas is hammered trash. Steve Sarkeesian looks unserious. My a, hand is shaking. You need to stop. And like, you need it, to calm down. Like, look, we are two. We are two programs in turmoil right now. LSU won Saturday because we didn't play, and that's a win for the fan base right now. But like, <laughs> but but Jesus Christ, Texas is. It's tough. You know what's happened? It, it was tough with Texas. And at least y'all can say, you know, you, you've you pretty much let go of your coach, even though he's coaching the remainder of the season. We have a brand new coach. We have been so close. We keep blowing leads. We're winning. And I'd be like, oh, we good. And then I look up and we lost the game. That's the problem with Texas. We're winning for three quarters and then we can't close out the game. It's bad. It's really bad. He's got to figure it out because, you know, Texas will let you go quick. Yeah. Well, I will say that it's better to know that the talent is at least comparable. You know what I mean? Because if you you can coach out uh, blowing leads, I mean, I guess you could coach it out. Like it seems like it's a it's a deal. But they're Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Baylor, Iowa State, Kansas State, uh, and now Texas sits at sixth in the Big Twelve, soon to be the Little Twelve, because <laughs> the Little Ten, because Texas and Oklahoma are coming to the SEC where they will ritually be bathed in their own blood uh, year in it's and year out. I can't wait for it to happen. Yeah, it's going to happen. You're going to see. I can't wait till you guys no, get to the because, conference. Because <laughs> recruiting wise, I think it's going to be a better situation for us because we're going to be in the SEC. Oh, yeah, because so. it really would suck not to be able to recruit the state of Texas. Well, you, all, you, all you need is to recruit right there. The state of well, Texas. Well, I know, but people leave, particularly to Oklahoma. Oklahoma what? gets a lot of people. <laughs> Oklahoma gets a lot of people. All right. Okay. Um, it's time for Van's very serious question of the week. Are you ready what for you it? What you got? Mm-hmm. This is... This is Van's very serious question of the week in honor of Will and Jada. Oh, man. Okay. This is not even a okay. You marry someone. Let's say you're married to Brian. Okay. Super abs. First of all, is there a, is there an amount of weight that Brian could gain to where you would tell Brian that he needs to lose weight? So you don't know my history. No. Okay. No. So Brian can't get too big for you to where you would tell him to use, lose weight. No. But right. if unless it was he was unhealthy, right? Like he can't walk up the stairs or something. All right. So this is the question then. Will and Jada hashtag relationship honesty. Is it fair to tell your significant other when they are getting too out of shape for you to be attracted to. Well, 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 see, now you lost me. Okay. Now, if you, if the question had been, is it fair to tell them that they're too out of shape? Yeah, it's fair. But so like, it's fair. Are, so, so it's fair. Oh, it's a hundred percent to so say both, you're out of so, shape. So both but ways. Wait. So both ways. Wait, wait a second. So it's fa- it's fair for a woman to look at a guy and be like, you've gained too much weight, and it's fair for a man. And you can tell me to look absolutely. at his woman My significant and say, other? you've gained too much weight. That's like, fair. Yeah, I, I'm okay with that, and I always okay. have been. I've always said that. But then to add the second part of what you said, <laughs> and you're unattractive. Well, forget about that. Let's take that out. Okay, because I'm like, <laughs> because good that's, but, but look, that's the only reason why you would be saying it is because that's not true. It could be health reasons. But let's say it's not health reasons. Let's say no. I'll see, so well, it is attractive. Well, see, what's the question, Van? The question is, no, the- I'm, I'm being honest. The question is about not forget about health reasons. Let's say they're completely and totally healthy. They're okay. completely and totally healthy, right? Because by the way. I don't know if people know that there are people who are overweight who are healthy. Okay. Like a lot of people. Okay. Right now, I can run longer than most of you motherfuckers. Okay. Uh, but I'm chunky. 
But so the question is, is it okay to tell your significant other when they've gained too much weight? Honey, you need to, is it, is it okay specifically for a man to tell a woman that? I am okay with it. Mm. And I always have been. And it's a question like that I've talked about in my current relationship. And in, I've actually asked, like, if you see me and like, sometimes you can't see it in yourself. Yeah. Like, could you tell me? Right. Now you don't have to be rude with it. Maybe uh-huh. you'll be like, you know, maybe you want to go to the gym with me or, you know, like, oh, I heard about this great workout class. We so should let's do, do it together. So, so let's do it right now. Let's do it right now. Like, let's say, you know. Okay. You tell me, like you break it to me easy right now, like that. I'm, I don't. I'm not uh, comfortable doing this. Just you gotta do it, because I gotta show you the way it's really gonna go. Okay. okay. Yeah. And and in the way I said it, right? In the way you like said, way say it, in the okay. way that you said okay. it, and I'll show. Yeah. Van, the other day I was walking down the street and I saw this amazing workout place. Mm-hmm. You got to go to it. I'm telling everybody I know that right. they should come and join me with it. Right. It looks like it's fun. Something different I haven't seen before. You should come with me. Why? Because I think it would be fun. It'd be something to do. Maybe yeah, we could I, strengthen our bond as uh, co-hosts. But I'm having fun right now playing Madden. I mean, like, why okay. would I have to go do that? Like, why? Well, why? why, why well, hold on for a second. As why, a friend, hold on. Why are you telling me this, though? Why are you? Why as you, a friend, I'm gonna tell you why. Okay. As a friend, okay, you have expressed numerous times that mm-hmm. you're not happy with your appearance. Right, but the reality is that I say that to you to get feedback and to get you to say that I do actually still look okay. What you trying to say? I'm right. You trying to say no. I'm fat? Is that what you're it sounds to say? like a personal. It sounds like a personal preference. You tell me that you're not okay. I didn't say that. Yeah, so but I'm now, listening. But now, I, I'm yeah, listening know, to what now, you're saying and but saying, now you're "Hey, trying to get me to come to gyms and stuff like that." You're I'm trying, trying to, to say, help you feel better about you, yourself. You're trying to say I'm jiggly. <laughs> <laughs> Would never use that terminology. <laughs> And you know you lost this. You know you lost this. No, you did a good job. <laughs> you did a good job. 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 You're trying to say I've got gelatin. I'm trying, guys. I'm trying. Jiggly. Jiggly. All right. I got to go box. Wait. Do you what? feel like it's okay to tell your significant other? No. Woo. Wait, wait. Could they tell you? They can tell me. So I, you just I, don't uh, think men can tell women? No. I don't think men have that right. I like. I'll be honest with you. Like it, it, it. You, they should, but it's just too much going on. It's just. It's I'm, for the, o- I'm okay with it, but I might be different. It's for the same reason I don't really want to hear white people's opinions on the black community. Gotcha. It's just your. It's your. Your opinion is is based on too much bullshit. It's too toxic. You know, like you, you marry a lady, and you just hope for the best. You know, <laughs> what you like? You, you just, I'm just saying, you just hope okay. for the best. Plus, how are you gonna tell somebody that their weight is getting when you expecting this person to have your to have kids and stuff? Like it's just, it's just, it's too much. You just don't do it. Just don't do it. There are ways to do it. Right? Maybe there are ways. Don't tell me. Don't say. Don't say you're getting fat. Don't never say it like that to me. <laughs> don't ever say that. Like that's rude. Oh. There, you can soften the blow. Tell your thing caps off, but do not stop learning. I am Van Lathan Jr. I'm Rachel and Lindsay. Two cools in the room. We out. <laughs>